So yeah, the, welcome back everyone. Let's uh, begin the session two of today. It's pre-seminar. Um, this is about the session two. We'll start with reporting CO2 emissions. And then in the second um, sec following session, we'll do a, a service request that uh, Stelio has briefly mentioned earlier um, uh, today. So um, my name is Jiyun Zhang. Um, I'm the, I'm the uh, Associate Environment Officer at ICAO Secretariat working on um, Corsia, and I'll be sort of guiding you for the second segment of today's session. Um, before we jump start the second session, please don't forget to ask any questions you may have on session one and um, using the chat function as, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, um, available on the right hand side of the screen. Um, we will mute everyone during my presentation um, for, you know, for lack of, uh, uh, to, to reduce any confusion. Um, but uh, you please feel free to use a chat function if needed. Um, I believe that everyone now has access to the CCR and you can test, you have tested the CCR uh, sort of like logging in and uh, while well, during the break time. So, but if you, in case you don't have access still and you cannot sort of somehow log into the system, please um, inform the secretary using the chat function again um, so that one of us can help you. So um, in the last session, you have learned what CCR is, brief sort of overview of the CCR and introduction, and also checked the basic functions or features of CCR, um, sort of guide uh, to a walkthrough of the, how CCR looks like. Now it's time to do the fun part, which is about reporting the CO2, which is, you know, uh, the main sort of thing that you have to do this year um, to report the CO2 emissions, 2019 CO2 emissions. Uh, and if there's any mistake or whatnot, then uh, using the service request to ICAO as a Corsia focal point. Um, for this presentation specifically, you can also refer to the Corsia CCR Quick Guide Series D. Um, A was about the first introduction um, sort of uh, presentation, and Series D is about CO2 emissions reporting. Um, as Stelios mentioned, this was sent to you um, last week, um, along with the invitation. So, um, hmm. I don't know. See, okay, so there's some delay in, I guess, the presentation slides. Sorry for that. Um, so, as you know, for the first time in 2020, um, airplane operators and verif verification bodies uh, will both submit verified emissions report to to you to state by end of May this year. Um, with the verified uh, emissions report, states will conduct an order of magnitude check, uh, including any filling in of data gaps in case uh, there, the airplane operators uh, didn't report to the state. Um, then state will sort of um, uh, collate those data, aggregate the CO2 emissions by state pair, and then um, report to ICAO using that information according to uh, Annex 16, Volume 4. The deadline for states to submit such an aggregated CO2 emissions by state pair is 31st of August this year, meaning using the information that we are presenting today, you have to submit uh, to ICAO using CCR or, or um, uh, the C uh, 2019 CO2 emissions. Furthermore, states shall also submit in um, the list of air brain operators um, attributed to the state for 2021 and also the list of verification bodies accredited in the state for 2021 um, in 2020 by the end of November um, 2020. Um, for the, uh, as explained in the earlier session, you will notice that the CO2 emissions reporting um, is for this year is regarding the 2019 emission, the past emission, uh, while the airplane operator and also the verification body information is for 2021. So let us briefly revisit how such CO2 emissions data can be submitted to ICAO through the CCR data flow process for your sort of to, to recap the what you have learned in the previous session. So um, in fact, you've already learned it and it's the same for all the reporting areas, you know, air, airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, uh, canceled emission units, or a sort of course, yeah, eligible fuels, but uh, let's put it in more context of 2019 CO2 emissions here. So 
for 2019 emissions, what you need to do um, is, again, because there's no record of 2019 CO2 emissions, as a course, the focal point, you have to create a year record. Um, the uh, once a year record is created, uh, in case you have, um, you know, a state user as well, then uh, this, oh, oh, sorry, um, irrespective of you having a state uh, state user or not, um, once a year record is created, the default status will become a in progress, um, and then you can add or edit information. So you as course a focal point, and as well as state user in case you have a state user. Um, then both, again, you and a uh, state user will add, edit information, delete information if needed, and, and date um, and um, information and data on CO2 emissions by state pair. Once all the information and data is added, the state user can change the status to complete or, or also the course focal point. But in this case, if there is state user, then the state user will change the status to complete to uh, to you know basically to tell to the C uh, course focal point that the information is complete and it is for your review. So as a course focal point, you will uh, you will receive an automated email message saying that you know the state user have uh, indicated that the inputting of information is complete. It's for your review basically. You will as a course your focal point you will review the information and data. Um, if there is some error, something, you know, you found that there is like not, not all the information is uh, included or not, then you will sort of change the status back to in progress status. Um, so that again, the state user can, in, uh, the state user can sort of add and edit information again. The email notification will be sent to the state user automatically um, to, you know, indicate that there is some something, some more information or, you know, um, an action to revise the information is needed. Um, if there is no revision needed, the Courtier focal point will change the status to ready. This is the action of reporting to ICAO. You have to change the status to ready to report to ICAO and ICAO will receive an automated email message saying that, you know, the state A has submitted their CO2 emissions, 2019 CO2 emissions. ICAO secretariat, um, the ICAO super user um, will check for format correctness and if um, and see if there, it is free from such kind of error. If if the uh, an error is found, found, then Corsia um, ICAO super user will change the status back to in progress, and automated email message will send be sent to CFP Corsia focal point to indicate that there is some uh, revision on the in information is needed. Then we'll go through back to the same sort of process. You know, check if there is any revision needed and go back. If not, then again the Corsia focal point after revising the information will change the status back to ready, um, so that the this report can be submitted to ICAO. If there is no such an information, uh, no error, then ICAO super user will lock the information um, by changing the status to locked and, and use this information to calculate emissions, uh, total emissions um, for a baseline setting or to calculate uh, the sector's growth factor. So um, this information that is in the, the state's submitted information that is locked will be used for any publication or uh, um, calculation. So um, this process is further explained in the CCR Quick Cut series, Late Late D, as, as I mentioned when I opened this uh, session. Uh, which was sent to you again last week. Um, the leaflet provides a very concise step-by-step -step guide as well as reporting tips on what you should remember um, on uh, how to report the CO2 emissions, specifically for CO2 emissions. Um, this will be a, be a quite handy sort of tool for you um, in the later when you submit, uh, when you prepare and submit CO2 emissions data to ICAO by the end of uh, August this year, um, because you have to do it on your own without, you know, um, yeah. Um, 
So now it's let me sort of show you um, lively <laughs> how the CCR uh, CO2 emissions reporting looks like. Um, let me rather rather than uh, relying on a presentation slide, I will actually show you um, through with the CCR. Um, sorry, I think there is some delay in power presentation uh, and my computer. So uh, sorry for that. But now I believe you can see the sort of CCR web page now. Um, so as, as Stelius mentioned, if you have difficulty sort of finding your password, you can use the forgot password function here. But uh, in case you already sort of have access to CCR, I believe you have the ID and password um, that you can put in and then just sign in. then you will land on the landing page um, that so again back to Vanuatu as Stelius uh, showed you this uh, this um, uh, afternoon and uh, we'll go specifically sort of work on reporting CO2 emissions. If you remember the data process, uh, Corsia data process, the first thing that you have to do for to report any sort of of the, this reporting areas, reporting air um, plane operator, reporting verification bodies, or et cetera, et cetera. The first thing you have to do is to create a year record. How you create a year record is you click add here on the left hand side and then click quick add. Then we'll have a pop-up message that says, you know, add report CO2 emissions. Your ICAO state here for this uh, exercise is, or demonstration is Vanuatu. And then you have to choose a reporting year. We wanna do a 2019 emissions report because this is the action that you have to do um, this year. So let's create a 2019 emissions uh, report. Um, report. Um, so by creating the year record, um, you will see that the data status, as mentioned earlier, um, comes to in progress automatically. You'll have a Vanuatu for 2019 reporting year, um, a report, uh, year record that is in progress. How you access this record is by clicking the pencil icon here. Um, this pencil icon basically means edit. It's editable information because it's in progress status for Corsia focal point. You can edit it as long as it's the data status is in progress or complete. complete. So let's uh, access the year record by clicking the pencil icon. So when you open uh, the year record by clicking the pencil icon, you will see um, that there are four different tabs available. First one is details tab, uh, which gives you an information about the reporting year information, the state and reporting year, also the total CO2 emissions in tons uh, in the middle. Uh, you will see that the first two rows, total subject to offsetting requirement or total exempt from offsetting requirement is not applicable because 2019, again, year uh, record, again, is for the baseline setting. So there's no need for such an information. So it is set as non-applicable uh, automatically. You don't have to worry about this. The only thing that sort of matters for 2019 is the total CO2 emissions and also total CO2 emissions per state pair. So the details tab sort of provides a, you a high level summary of information that is, some, uh, that is related to this year record. Um, if you go scroll, scroll down, you'll see data status. Again, it shows in progress and it was created by test user CCR, CCR at what time? Um, as Stelius mentioned in the earlier session, every action in CCR is recorded, it's traceable, and it is shown, uh, an example of this is here, shown here. If you change the state of status, there will be different, um, sort of like a blue box appearing um, here that shows um, that, um, that the data status has been changed by a certain user, um, you know, at what time. So let's go to the second tab, which is about CO2 emissions by state pair. This is the 
uh, critical sort of um, tab for, for you to work on. This is the main sort of tab that you will be working on uh, and, and I will be presenting today. Um, so this is basically, you know, as the chat says, it's about CO2 emissions by state pair, uh, meaning from which state to which ICAO state and how much CO2 emissions happened uh, from the airplane operators attributed to your state in 2019. Um, subject to offsetting requirement again for 2019 is irrelevant. Um, so it's automatically be set to uh, not applicable. Uh, confidential data, this, um, if the airplane operator has uh, indicated that the information, uh, this, um, so say, for example, um, there's only one airplane operator in the whole wide world that, uh, that operates a route between state A and B. Then by indicating, uh, by sort of sharing this information, you will, uh, we are sort of sharing, a, you may, we may be sharing a confidential, commercially sensitive information. So in such a case, airplane operator in their emissions report will indicate that uh, specific routes will, uh, should be considered as a confidential data. And if that's, a, if that's the case, state will inform ICAO by, by clicking this confidential um, data, sort of um, filling in confidential data information, and ICAO will preserve that confidentiality. But we'll sort of get to it more in detail when we add the, uh, the sort of uh, entry. Um, the third one, third tab is CO2 emissions by airplane operators. Again, this is not applicable for 2019, so it is not active for 2019. There's no action that the states can do. There's no entry here. There's nothing you can do. So you don't have to worry about this for 2019 and 2020 emissions information. Um, the fourth tab is, as Stelius mentioned, it's about the data journal. Every action in CCR will be recorded, and if you have to, uh, do act, take, have taken actions specifically in this tab and uh, within this um, section, then that action will be recorded here. So, for example, because I created 2019 um, year record, it says you know report CO2 emissions under this section. Um, a new year record was added. So etc. And then I have viewed etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So all the information will be sort of available here to to you know provide um, data trans uh, transparency and also tra uh, traceability. So let's go back to um, the second tab to to actually add a uh, emissions sort of record. Um, uh, before I do that, I have uh, received a question about the difference between save and save and stay or save and uh, create and create and continue. You'll see uh, it here. It's it's basically sort of some um, features here are um, sort of uh, pop up. Um, so for example, this one is not pop up, but if you say if you um, click create, you will sort of go back to the original details tab or where all the entries are. If you say uh, create and then add another, then you will be, you know, ended up, um, you will have another screen like this to add a different uh, entry or different state pair. Um, if you click create and continue, then I, uh, I believe that you will stay in the same page. Um, so it's just, there's not much of a difference for a user perspective. It's more to facilitate in case you want to add multiple entries at the same time, you can use something like this. So I'll give you an example. Say uh, you want to add a, a route between Afghanistan and um, say Albania. And uh, the CO2 emitted between that state pair um, or from um, Afghanistan to Albania uh, from your uh, airplane operators that is attributed to you, for example, was uh, 500.45 tons of CO2. Um, say let's uh, what happens um, if you sort of cre create. If you just create it, then you will see that the, um, you'll go back to the report CO2 emissions sort of page, and uh, and you will see you know this uh, new year rep, uh, new sort of entry of uh, information from Afghanistan to Albania of 500.45 tons of CO2, and again it's not subject to a certain requirement. It's not applicable, so it's put as not applicable here. 
And then um, because I didn't indicate that this data was confidential, it will say false here. If I were to add um, using, say, create and continue, let's see what happens. So this time, let's say from Albania to back to Afghanistan, um, say it was 550 tons of CO2. Um, and you do create and continue. Then uh, you see you have created that um, information so that the entry will be visible in the data tab um, if you go back to the data tab area, but uh, you have stayed in that um, in that page. So it shows which uh, information was created by test user PCR, again, my account at what time, but this is it. So you like if you you know, if you want to edit something after you have inputted, or if you want to sort of confirm the information that you have added, you may use this function. Um, and then just, so again, if you click save, then you will go back to the um, the uh, the landing page that shows all the state pair information. If you click save and stay, the same, in, you will save and stay in this page. It's, it's quite sort of straightforward. Um, if you click around certain functions and you will understand uh, the difference. Um, it's more for your, uh, for you to sort of maneuver around the system. Um, if you find save and save, uh, save easier, then you can use save. If you think, if you want to confirm your information after you have saved, then you can use save and stay. And the same will be the true for create and create and continue or create and uh, create and stay. Um, so now I have two um, year sort of uh, entries uh, for 2019 year record, um, a, a route between Afghanistan and Albania. So Afghanistan from Afghanistan to Albania and from Albania to Afghanistan. Now you, you notice that there is two sort of uh, CO2 emissions information here. If you go back to the details tab, um, CCR will do an automated uh, sort of aggregation of CO2 emissions. So you'll see that the total of the two CO2 uh, state pair is already calculated for you. You don't have to worry about sort of adding those emissions. Um, CCR will do it automatically for you. Um, you can, um, as Davies mentioned, um, I believe that when you are using CCR to report CO2 emissions, you will use this page quite often. So um, if you don't want to click, you know, say report CO2 emissions, click 2019, um, click this tab and whatnot, uh, if you don't want to do it, the uh, one way to easily do this is to use, again, my favorite function or bookmark, bookmark uh, function by clicking the star button at the top and add um, edit, uh, edit to favorite. So report, say, uh, 2000, 2019 uh, CO2 um, for Vanuatu can be done um, automatically. Then you'll see when you go to the home page that oh, uh, you will see when you go to the home page, um, you have a my favorite that you can just you know uh, quickly click and then access the uh, 2019 CO2 emissions, uh, CO2 uh, year record uh, for Vanuatu. So let's click it and then go back to where we were before. Um, now I want to show you how to sort of um, add different uh, sort of entries here. So one way uh, is, you know, as I've shown you before, to add manually to, you know, use this full add function and go and, you know, sort of select a certain states from the drop down list to, you know, indicate from which state to which state and how many CO2 emissions and whether it was confidential or not. Um, but it may be a bit cumbersome if you have a large airplane operators attributed to your state and you have to include, you know, thousands of different state pairs it will be a nightmare for you to do it, you know, uh, one by one. So an easy way to sort of uh, do it is to use a importing function of CCR. How it works is that you import CSV file. Um, uh, 
this is a bit different from Excel uh, files. CSV file only um, you can you cannot import an Excel file, but only a CSV file. This CSV file may be opened by Excel function, but it won't be. Uh, it's not the same as the uh, Excel uh, file. I will show you an example here. Um, so CSV file, as you can see here, um, demo um, correct dot csv so the file file um, format is comma separated value um, which is sort of when you save an in uh, save the excel file you have to specify as a oh, comma specify csv file you cannot um, save as an excel like for example here excel workbook and import it you have to specifically save it as a csv file um, and then, uh, and then you can import it to the CCR. So uh, when you are using this function, it's something that you have to keep in your mind, um, and and use a template that will be available in the CCR web page for each different reporting areas. So for C this um, importing a CSV file function is not only for CO2, but it's it's available for report to report airplane operators, verification bodies, uh, or course eligible fuels, or cancelled emission units. So this function is available for every sort of reporting areas, but uh, the template may be different because the information that we need will be different. Say for CO2 emissions is from which state to which state again and CO2 emissions the amount and then whether it's confidential data or not. Whereas for reporting of airplane operators you need to you know you have to indicate the name of the airplane operator, the attribution method, uh, the, their address and things like that. So the template will be a bit different but it will be available on the, C, uh, on the CCR web page so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so I will give you an example of actually importing a CSV file or, you know, different um, entries for CO2 emissions of 2019 for Vanuatu. Say, for example, um, Vanuatu airplane operators had a route between uh, Tuvalu and Russia or uh, from Tuvalu to Russia, Russia to France, France to Uganda, Uganda to Belgium, Belgium to Lithuania and then Lithuania to Guatemala and say the corresponding CO2 emissions for each state pair was like this as presented. And then there was only one sort of confidential um, data from Uganda to Belgium. And let's see how you can import this file to CCR. Um, so, okay. See if it has a... Um, so if you click import CSV, then you will uh, arrive in this landing page. So upload file. And it, again, it says valid file extension hash CSV file. If you choose a file that you want to import, uh, in this case, I want to do the demo um, correct uh, CSV file. Then I click the file that I want to import and, uh, and click upload uh, button. Then um, CCR will check the file, file format, and uh, whether the, the template is correctly used, and things like that. Whether, uh, you know, check the name of the state, uh, whether, it, you know, and verify that the information here is correct, um, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are predefined functions in the CCR to sort of minimize any mistakes or errors that may happen. Uh, you notice that uh, the CCR says, you know, six new CO2 emissions by state pair in the file. So review the data. And if we are, you know, sure about this data, we can click confirm and continue import uh, button. So let's click that. Then the data import progress will, uh, import is in progress. And then CCR will show you the result. Um, so whether the the importing process uh, worked fine or not. Uh, now it says data imported successfully, so we can return to the CO2, uh, report CO2 emissions sort of um, section. Um, now, since we had two entries or two sort of uh, pairs, uh, Afghanistan, between Afghanistan and Albania already, and added six more um, uh, state pairs, 
in the uh, from the CSV file, now I have a total count of eight um, entries in the 2019 CO2 emissions by state pair. Again, if you go to back to the details tab, you will see that the, the aggregated total of all CO2 emissions in tons. Um, let me show you. So now, now um, if you go back to the details tab, you see the total CO2 emissions uh, information has been changed, automated, uh, automatically updated for you. Then um, I've already mentioned that there are some business rules uh, to prevent any mistakes being made in the, especially with the CSV importing function, because, you know, um, if you manually add different entries, you sort of select the state name from a drop down menu. So there's less chance for you to make an error. But in case you import CSV files, uh, the C, um, CCR sort of have a clear way to sort of navigate and, and um, only import uh, the, the state pair information that is correct. So let me show you how, you know, if such an, a mistake is made from the C, uh, CFB or uh, state user perspective. So say uh, the first sort of type of uh, mistake could be a domestic, to, to include a domestic route. Uh, or domestic uh, pair. So, uh, in this example, I show you a uh, you know a CSV file, so super simple, sort of only three um, pairs. Here, Japan to South Africa, South Africa to Canada, and then a domestic pair appears, Canada to Canada. Um, this could be a simple mistake. You know, the, the CFP, for example, didn't intend to use Canada to Canada. It would use, say it was Canada to Cambodia, but you know, because it's a CSV file, it may be a large file that you were working on. So you may not uh, notice that you made a mistake. In this case, because CCR was developed um, to only import information that is international, um, what it does right now is the CCR will only import these two uh, state pairs, so Japan to South Africa and South Africa to Canada, and will not uh, will not consider it as an error. You know, it's just a simple mistake. Um, but um, and and that's valid for the training version of the CCR. However, for the actual real CCR that will be launched shortly, um, those type of error, those domestic error, will uh, will be shown as error. Um, to, you know, um, to make sure that if such a mistake is made, the whoever that is working on this CSV file uh, understands that there was an error and able to sort of, you know, work around it. Um, this error uh, was sort of highlighted by the trainers uh, for the Corsia Body Partnership and was, uh, uh, IKEA was requested to, you know, uh, make it, uh, visible as an er as an error so that uh, if that uh, if uh, the intent was for an international pair uh, the state uh, can sort of easily you know identify that issue so let me actually show you in the training version how the currently it works with this um, state pairs um, so again let's go back to the CCR uh, web page go to tools, click import CSV. Then again, you will have to select the, the file that you want to import. Um, you click choose from and you select the file that you want to uh, import. When you upload the file, the CCR will sort of import, um, and, uh, will sort of read the file and show you what was um, what was in the in the file CSV file. And if you sort of check and confirm and continue import, let's see what uh, route what uh, state pair is imported, whether so Canada to Canada state pair is imported or not. Um, You will see, so the, right now in the training version, as I mentioned earlier, um, the CCR considers it, uh, you know, sort of ignores the domestic pair and thinks, you know, all the other 
international pair is imported successfully. So it will show you a that I imported successfully kind of um, message. But if you indeed look at the pairs, um, you will realize that the Canada to Canada pair, uh, state pair, which shouldn't have been there, is not recorded in the CCR. It's not imported. Um, again, CCR only imports the state pair that is legitimate, that is valid. So it's uh, it will sort of import only the ones that are valid. Now we have 10 um, counts of, uh, or 10 entries for this ear record. Another mistake you can make is sort of wrongfully name a state. So uh, I'll give you an example of, um, so let's check a CSV file that has a wrong state name. In this example, um, you'll see that uh, there's a state pair from Comoros to Korea. Um, as you would know, there are two Koreas in the world and what, say, the, the intent was to put Republic of Korea. Um, then if you try to import this CSV file, uh, CCR will show you an error message that this is not correct. Uh, let me show you how it actually looks like, how the error message looks like by importing another CSV file. with an uh, error um, of a state name, error in the state name. So if I try to import this file, then first what CCR will do is read, you know, and, and, and sort of cross-check with uh, what CCR has, cross-check with the information that CCR has. Uh, and, and it sh will show you that, you know, following record, there's uh, one new two choose information in the file um, and please check. So following records also have been added to the, um, so there is an error message. You cannot import the file because there's an error and the, and the error is a new, like new to record, which is Korea. Right now, the error message here doesn't show that, you know, because there's an error in this, in the name of the state or like the name of the under two uh, Callum, um, the error message is a bit weird. Uh, we are aware of it um, and, and developers are working to sort of change the this error message into more sort of um, customer friendly information or more straight, straightforward information right now it doesn't it shows there is something error um, so we'll we are still working on it but uh, in the actual ccr the error message will be more straightforward for you to understand what is going on um, so you have to go back to the file and change the, the, the name to uh, in the right format so that you can import the file. So um, say if you go back to the file and change the name to, you know, to correctly reflect the name of the state, what we can do is change in the CSV file and save it. So that to uh, to import the right um, file. So let's redo the same thing uh, to import the revised file and see how the upload or importing works. So now you see that there is no error. Um, so you can confirm and continue import. The, the difference is before it was two uh, named uh, a state named Korea. Now it's uh, rectified, so now it's Republic of Korea. So you can confirm and continue importing. Um, then you'll see all three uh, entries will be imported uh, successfully into uh, where uh, into the year record. We can return to the uh, to the year record. And you will see now it used to be only 10. Um, now there are 13 state pair entries that are available there. You can, uh, because of page size is 10, you can only see so 10 here, and then you have to do the page, second page. But the other way around is to change the pa page size to say a larger amount. So you can see all the state pairs in one screen. Another error that you can have is, 
answer to have a zero or minus or a character in the CO2 emissions information. Um, so in this example, you see that CO2 emission between, uh, from Japan to Kenya is zero. In this case, CCR will automatically detect that there is something wrong. There is, uh, you know, uh, zero sort of CO2 emissions. Or if you click, uh, if you say in, include like character uh, here, or if you have minus value, then CCR will detect that as an error as well. Let's see how CCR shows an error message in, the, in such a case. So again, the same thing in the CCR. Um, uh, yeah, again, the same thing in CCR. So you try to import a CSV file, click import and um, locate the file that you want to import. And this case, our example was uh, having a emission, a CO2 emission value as zero. So what happens if you try to import a such a say pair? Um, CCR are again because there's no error. There's like there's technically like a number um, in the CO2 emissions column. It will see as there's no error at, at first when it sort of reads that information through this function. But when you try to actually import it, uh, it will show you uh, a message that says there's something wrong. So before when there was no error in the CSV file, it used to say, you know, uh, import it successfully or something like that. Now it says row number five value is blank or duplicate or uh, validation failed. So if you want, like you can see, check that error message more in detail by downloading the error sheet. Um, and it will show you how the CCR has read this, uh, this CSV file um, what, uh, in its importing function. So let's see what uh, the error message sh shows. Um, I think there's something, some um, internet connection issue with my computer right now. It's super uh, slow. Um, so, I'm not really sure if it's uh, downloading properly, but um, if you try it from your end, uh, we'll show you uh, an Excel sheet that says for row five, uh, you know, there's an error. You know, it's not, it has failed to import because there's an error. Uh, for the successfully imported other uh, pairs, it will show a success. Um, for this error, it will show as fail or error or something like that. Um, but unfortunately, I think, the internet is super slow that I cannot show you. Um, but nonetheless, if you go back to the, the state pairs information, you will notice that a new uh, rows has been, new four entries actually have been imported. They used to be 13, um, I think. And now there's more sort of uh, pairs, Canada to Brazil, Brazil to Nigeria, Nigeria to Republic of Korea, and Kenya to Japan uh, included here. Notice that Japan Japan to Kenya is not here because again the value was zero. So CCR automatically detected that there is you know the the information is not correct. It's not imported. Um, you can do use a. I don't necessarily uh, recommend you, but in case you realize that certain pairs are, so for example, a, a confidential data, and you forgot to sort of uh, identify that as confidential data, what you can do also is to click uh, the the state pairs that are impacted like that. So say this from Belgium to Lithuania, Lithuania to uh, Guatemala. This two sort of state pairs. Are, were supposed to be uh, confidential, for example, but not currently it's indicated as false. You can change the status by using a bulk function as well. So click um, the check the, the state pairs that you want to change, go to bulk and then update it. And, uh, but then there's a warning message because, you know, you can make more mistakes by using bulk functions. So we don't necessarily recommend you, but uh, this, uh, feature is available in CCR in case you would actually absolutely need it. 
So you can update the um, confidential data status by sort of clicking, um, you know, by checking the, the entries that are all affected for, for the same purposes. But obviously you cannot do like bulk uh, update for CO2 emissions amount because that amount will vary by every state pair. Um, however, you will notice here that this two um, year and uh, the entries from Belgium to Lithuania and from Lithuania to Guatemala now shows that it's true for confidential data, meaning that it is indeed a confidential data. So you, you will notice that, you know, even the bulk function is feasible, but again, we don't recommend you because it's likely that you made mistakes that you don't want to. So um, let me show you another sort of easy feature um, for with uh, CCR um, that is uh, quite handy for you. So for 2019, what you will do, um, um, for 2019, you have to create a new year record because this is absolutely the first year that you report CO2 emissions to ICAO. However, say for 2020, you may need, you may sort of um, uh, create a new year record um, and um, you know, fill in all these uh, CO2 emissions. But one thing you can do is that, you know, if the airplane operators that are attributed to your state, the route hasn't changed it. Say the same from and to um, state pairs are valid and, and you want to use that information. A cool thing, um, cool feature about CCR is to, that it, it enables you to do so. Uh, meaning when you create a year record, you don't have to sort of add and quick add as I've done before because there was no sort of uh, year record to copy from. But uh, for 2020, you can copy um, the another reporting year being 2019 reporting year uh, to create a 2020 year record. So if you click that, then, uh, I, okay. Um, add other uh, reporting year, um, copy from other reporting year uh, function, like pop-up message will pop, um, will be shown. And you can choose from which uh, reporting year you want to copy that information. So for here, I want to copy from Vanuatu 2019, you know, that is in progress. And then I want to, I want to copy for 2020. So um, if you create by copying from a different uh, year record, then what it shows um, if you go to the year record. Let me just uh, let's just wait for the CCR to actually up copy the year records from Vanuatu 2019 to 2020. Um, we'll show you the 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 state pairs, the same state pairs as in 2019. Sorry for the. For, for this uh, delay, it's, it seems that the internet is really bad today. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to ask in the chat function. I am constantly checking. So, uh, and, and if, you know, if there is relevant questions, I can address it right away. So now, yeah. So a new 2020 information um, is sort of copied from 2019. But you'll notice that the total CO2 emission is actually zero because CCR doesn't copy the CO2 emissions amount. It shouldn't because for each year, you know, airline oper uh, airlines or airplane operators may have the same um, state pair, but the emissions information will vary because the fuel used will vary, right? Um, so if you go to the, the CO2 emissions by state pair tab, you will notice that the same um, state pair from to to uh, from to information is kept, but then there is no CO2 emissions uh, information here. You have to sort of uh, you have to like edit it by clicking the pencil icon here and edit uh, the amount. So let's do that. So we'll say before, I think it was 500.45 uh, uh, tons of CO2 for 2019. Um, this year, the airplane operator operated more um, here. So say uh, 1,000 um, 
CO2 uh, was emitted, 1,000 tons of CO2 was emitted from that state pair, then you can um, edit it by clicking the pencil icon and adding the CO2 emissions information here. Um, you will notice that uh, the this offsetting require, subject to offsetting requirement is set as a no. This is another error that we have uh, figured out in the training version. So in the actual CCR um, that that will be launched, uh, the official version, um, version one, will have as a not applicable, will, um, you know, as before. Um, this is an error that we have identified, so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you will see that you know uh, all the the same entries are copied. So you just need to edit or add the information as needed um, for the CO two emissions and whether the the this uh, state pair is confidential data or not. So I think I covered uh, pretty much the main functions features of CCR except one thing that is changing the data status. Um, as mentioned a couple of times already, uh, data status in CCR is absolutely critical. Um, you know, Corsia Focal Point can edit the information as freely as possible as long as it is in progress or complete status. Um, again, state user can only edit or re revise the, the information only when it is in progress because complete data status means state user is uh, competent that it is complete for Corsia Focal Point's review. However, if you change the status as a Corsia focal point, uh, if you change the data status to ready, that means it's ready for ICAO's uh, review or ICAO's check for format correctness. ICAO is not checking, you know, the the information qualitatively, like uh, or quantitatively, or yeah, um, ICAO is not checking whether the actual CO2 information is correct or not, right? It's it's the authority of the state. Um, state has to make sure that CO2 amount is indeed correct. So ICAO is not checking any of that. ICAO is checking whether there's you know error in the system or error, like error in say you know CO2 emission total CO2 emission is uh, locked as in minus or if there is the the total CO2 emissions is you know zero or something like that. If there is any state pair that has zero and things like that. So ICAO only checks the format correctness um, when it's uh, ready. So it's absolutely crucial for the Corsia focal point to be, you know, confident in the in the in in the year record, and once and only when it's it's uh, confident that it is ready for ICAO's review, it can change the status to ready. Um, before you can you can you know set the data status to complete to to indicate that you know the state user or course focal point feels that this information is indeed sort of like complete completely uploaded. Um, so you will notice that, uh, because I was working on 2020, sorry, uh, 2020 uh, data status has changed it from in progress to complete. Um, in this case, because the role is Corsia focal point, you can still, um, um, you know, uh, edit the information by, again, clicking the pencil icon and changing, even, you know, deleting entries, adding more entries, revising the CO2 emissions information, et cetera, et cetera. But once you are, you know, uh, once you change it to ready status, you cannot do it. Let me show you. So if you change the data status to ready, this basically means I'm submitting to ICAO. This is the act of submitting information to ICAO. So if I change data status to ready, you'll see a notification or you know a pop-up message that says, "Are you really sure?" Because if you say if you change it to ready, because you're submitting to ICAO, you cannot this uh, this whole information will be read only to you. You cannot edit it anymore, unless you know again through service request. Um, but that's only to address a, a mistake that is made. In an ideal situation, you don't even need to do that. So this information will just be read only and I care to, to check, lock, and, and use that information to calculate and publish data. So um, let's see, because we have changed the status to ready, 
uh, in the system for 2020, you'll notice that a different icon has been made. It's I icon, so it's only for read only, uh, whereas pencil icon means edit. You, it's editable information. So if you click I icon, for example, you can only see the information, but you cannot add or edit or delete or anything. Uh, there's a warning message as well that says, you know, this report is not, it's only read only. Um, if you have some errors and whatnot, you have to contact ICAO um, to do that. And how you contact ICAO, that's through a, a function that is called service request, which I'll be covering uh, later, um, right after actually uh, this, um, this one. So, um, I think that's about it. So I think I gave you a gist of or brief overview of how CO2 reporting function uh, works in the CCR and different entries, ways to import different information, you know, errors that you may uh, face, et cetera, et cetera. So, so far, if you have any questions about, re uh, about reporting CO2 emissions, please feel free to use the chat function and let me know uh, what you, uh, the questions you may have. Um, I think we have some time for you to actually sort of try adding at least one entry uh, or creating a year record, let's say create a 2019 year record and, uh, and then add say one, you know, state pair. So I'll give you say about like three minutes um, for you to do that. So, um, and, uh, and see if you have, uh, you know, have any issues in creating a year record and adding a state pair. So I'll sort of pause for, again, three minutes until uh, 44, um, I think it's 544, 544, yeah, <laughs> uh, 544 PM. Um, so that you can create, again, create your record for your state for 2019 and uh, add one state pair. It doesn't matter which, from which state to which state, but uh, please make it, um, please, you know, create a, a state pair um, that, you know, it doesn't matter again for the state or the amount, CO2 amount or whatever, just uh, try creating your record and if it works, fine. Um, uh, I just received an, uh, the question, can we use a CCR for a period of test, uh, after you delete all the entries? I'm not sure if I understand your question correct, uh, correctly. So, uh, this CCR training version will be valid, uh, for, for a certain period, uh, I, for you know, undefined time, uh, this will your uh, ID will be valid for certain days, and you can play with it. Um, uh, you know, to to create the year record, to to add different entries, to import different CSV files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, will actually share you a homework um, that you can sort of do. Um, we plan to do more of an in-class in exercise, but because uh, this is a remote session, it's a bit tricky. So we'll share you a file for you to, you know, play around it and work around it. And um, and once you know all that uh, that uh, playing around uh, happens, um, we will clean this uh, this whole sort of record. So whatever you have inputted, it's it's a fake data so that they will all be removed from the system so, you, so that you don't have to worry. I don't know if I have answered your question. Um, if, if this is what you have asked, um, that's great. Uh, if not, if you want, if you have further questions, please feel free to leave it here. Uh, this is uh, Stelios. Can I add something to um, what uh, Jiu mentioned? Um, what was mentioned is correct. You will have access to this training version of um, of the CCR for a couple of more weeks, uh, for sure. In the future, once we have the version one of the CCR up and running, we will also make available another training version of it. If you would like to play and you know get some more experience before using, uh, you know, the version one, um, it. 
will not be exactly the same, um, you know, web page, maybe slightly different, but we provide all this information at a later stage once we have you know, version one up and running. But yes, we will give you uh, also the comfort of uh, using something that is not final for you to get more experience with uh, the functionalities of the CCR. Thank you, Stelius. Uh, that's that's very helpful. Um, so now it's uh, the time that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's the last session today. Uh, we're going to do the how to report a service request or how to um, request ICAO Secretariat uh, to to you know um, to either change data status, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I will go quickly go over the presentation slide rather than actually showing you in the CCR screen because it seems that the internet is a bit uh, slow today. But I believe that the, this presentation slide captures everything that uh, that we sort of, that you may um, have in the in uh, actual CCR. So it's a, again, it's the final last presentation today. Um, um, as you have probably have noticed in the CCR at the at the very bottom of the navigation page, uh, if you are a Corsia focal point, you will see a service request. Uh, again, it's not going to be um, uh, visible if you are a state user because this function is not intended for them. State user can uh, has limited access and limited uh, authority in the CCR as previously explained by Stelius. Uh, only the Corsia focal point can initiate this uh, service request. Um, you can click the you know the the bottom and uh, the service request and and just like you know reporting. It. Uh, CO2 emissions. So, what is this? Uh, what is service request then? Um, when you encounter issues regarding CCR, um, you may be able to find relevant answers from the help section, the question mark. Um, but uh, and 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 again, that the help function is created to address your questions. However, when you encounter issues that is not about questions. But it's rather because you need to resolve something, some errors in the CCR, for example, um, then uh, uh, say you have wrongfully changed the ear record status into ready. You are not intending to do so. You had some issues and uh, you made a mistake. You know, you were trying to click, uh, say, for example, complete, but somehow you click ready, then um, then uh, service request is there to address that kind of issues. Um, um, so by using service requests, you're basically sending a, a message to ICAO secretariat or ICAO super user that there's you know, assistance needed. Um, you will have to provide information to ICAO about the, what the issue is uh, um, and uh, you will use by using a predefined types of request, uh, meaning there is a handful of already defined uh, requests uh, such as you know uh, changing their ear record status back to in progress from ready that's one sort of type of service request you can make um, so and I'll walk you through a different types of those uh, requests uh, in the in the following slides again as I mentioned only Corsia focal point can uh, create a service request to minimize any confusion if, um, and or you know confusion in the communication between ICAO and the state um, Creating a service request is pretty much the straightforward same as before. You can just click add and quick uh, full add or quick add. The only difference is quick add will be a pop up. Full add is just like you know the landing page, so uh, there's you know there's not much difference from creating a year record uh, for any other reporting areas. Again, uh, the the difference uh, in this in this service request is that you have a predefined um, types of service request that I'm going to be talking uh, about. So the different types of uh, or options um, that you can choose in the service request are as follows. The first one is data upload request. The um, suppose there is an error in the CCR system and you somehow you are of course a focal point and cannot seem to create a year record. Uh, you've already compiled information um, about the emissions 
uh, or estate pairs and, and emissions uh, in the CSV format. You just want to create and import the CSV file and somehow, again, the CCR uh, doesn't work and you cannot create the year record. Then uh, what you can do is use this service request and uh, upload the data and, and request ICAO to upload the information, the CCR, on behalf of you. Again, um, this is just in case that that uh, data upload is not working. It, it's not uh, it's not supposed to um, sort of um, uh, it's not um, you, you still as of course a focal point. You still have to once the year record is created and data is imported, you are the person who who has to review, change the status to ready to report to ICAO. ICAO may support you using this function to upload that information, but it's, it's again, that's just to facilitate uh, the error in the system, uh, a possible error in the system. So the, the role of Corsair Focal Point doesn't change. The Corsair Focal Point still has to review the information and submit to ICAO by changing the status to ready. Um, when you do this uh, service request, actually, um, you will have to upload the data or upload the CSV file or upload the information that you wanted to submit uh, so that ICAO can just uh, create a year record and import that information. Again, this is just to accommodate possible error in the system and it's not, it's not, shouldn't be the case that, you know, I can, uh, state users, uh, of course, the focal points not create the, the year record when the system is correct and just expect ICAO to upload it for you. Um, there are 193 states, so ICAO um, should rely on states to, you know, do um, use the system as, as needed and then uh, we'll just support when there is an error in the system, so that cannot be or solved by, by the state. Um, the second, um, the second uh, error type, uh, sorry, uh, second um, service prep type could be release data with status ready. So this is exactly what I mentioned earlier. Um, suppose, of course, your focal point finds error in this data right after the data is submitted to ICAO. Um, in this case, service request can be submitted uh, to request a release of such data. Um, if this is actually pro processed by ICAO super user, the data status will change from ready to in pro back to in progress so that the course focal point and state user can edit the information and, and you know, correct the, the mistake. Third option is to unlock a submitted data, which is, you know, say more time has passed since the data has been or data status has been changed by the course of focal point. So the information has been already submitted to ICAO. ICAO has checked, validated the data by checking the format correctness and couldn't find any error you know, in the format. Um, so ICAO has changed the status to locked. Um, you still may have, uh, and then after that, Corsia focal point suddenly finds an error in the airplane operator's CO2 emission, for example. Um, in this case, Corsia focal point may submit service request to unlock the submitted data. However, the if the locked data has already been used for calculation, so such as like total sectoral CO2 emissions for base baseline setting, or sectors growth factor um, calculation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no adjustment will be made to this calculation uh, as a result of error correction. This is per the Annex 16 Volume 4. Um, you know, uh, once published information cannot be changed, the, the change, um, you know, uh, will be recorded in the CCR for future references and whatnot, uh, but that won't uh, change the calculation uh, after the, the data has been locked. Um, the other two um, sort of uh, service request types are to inform or flag a change in status. So one is change in Corsia focal point nomination, and the other is to inform ICAO to voluntarily participate in Corsia. However, um, as there is a you know red uh, star um, is uh, indicated, this is only for information only. Uh, so you know this is. It's a kind gesture from a state or, of course, a focal point to inform 
I care through CCR that there are such uh, there will be such an uh, such a change, but this is will not um, trigger any action from IKEA Secretariat. ICAO has to be officially uh, officially communicated by state letter um, uh, from a authorized uh, authority. Um, and 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 uh, for those types of change, so a change of course a focal point, and the change of Corsia uh, participation status, uh, you know, to voluntarily join Corsia, we would absolutely sort of encourage you to do so. But this has to be communicated through an official channel, not from CCR. Um, this will only be like ICAO super user sir, will appreciate uh, you sharing that kind of information but we won't take any further action based on that kind of information because it's considered as non-official or in, uh, unofficial. Um, and then again, the last one is other, not specified, because again, we try to predefine CCR, you know, make it as, as clear as possible, but you know, there may be cases that you encounter some issues that couldn't be foreseen by the developers or by the secretariat. In this case, you can use this other function and provide more detail, like in, you know, additional comments section, um, and, uh, you know, provide descriptions, you know, what, what has happened, what kind of error you, you have, may have uh, foreseen and things like that. Um, so that ICAO can uh, sort of take uh, necessary actions as, as needed. So, um, just like other year records, service request has its own status, um, but it's more simple. <laughs> um, there are five different types new, closed, more information needed, ongoing, and withdrawn. But from a Corsia focal point perspective, um, they can only change from new or withdraw. So you create a new new service request by, you know, uh, if you when you create a new service request, it becomes automatically as new, straightforward. And you re realize that, oh, no, I don't need that service request. Then you can just withdraw that, um, you know, just uh, to inform that, oh, I thought there was some issues, but you know, I've resolved it. No need, no action is needed from my case secretariat. Then, um, you know, this will be logged in the system um, for again to for data integrity and trace traceability, but no action will be done from my case secretariat perspective. For other status, so again, closed, more information and uh, needed and ongoing can only be changed by ICAO super user. Um, more information needed, uh, obviously, is, you know, when ICAO is not certain of the situation, you know, we need more background information for ICAO super user to take necessary uh, action, then, you know, um, ICAO super user will change to more information needed, and there will be an automated uh, email message that is sent to the Corsair focal point. So Corsair focal point can provide further information as needed. Um, that's, you know, one way. Um, the other status as in closed is, you know, when ICAO super user has uh, taken action and, and the, everything is resolved and whatnot. So the, the, um, ICAO super user changes the status to closed and will be archived for future reference. As, as mentioned uh, numerous times, every action in the CCR is recorded. Um, so this such uh, withdrawn or, you know, closed and all those, uh, 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 service requests will be uh, recorded or archived in, in the CCR for future reference. So that's about it. Um, I know it was pretty heavy for you, uh, this um, whole you know, new system that you are playing around. And, and so if you have any questions, it doesn't have to be just about service request, anything about CCR uh, so far, please feel free to, to ask. I'm checking the chat function right now to check uh, the questions that was addressed. Um, I see that Stelius has mentioned, uh, Stelius has um, answered certain questions. So we'll check the last, I think, last two questions. Um, hmm. Okay, so the last, I think the the question from Farba, I think is, uh, Stelius is still, Sort of answering so the I, I can i can try and answer this question sure. um okay uh thank you for the clarification uh from the, what i understand your question is whether you can upload a pdf for example with an official letter for nomination of a Corsia focal point 
um, at this point in time, the CCR does not have this functionality. You can only upload a file in connection to requesting ICAO to assist you with uploading information in the CCR. Uh, but in a future version of the CCR, we are thinking about making this available uh, as a functionality where you can upload uh, a PDF file, for example, that could be an official letter. But still, it is advisable that uh, you send us through official communication channels. The, um, uh, the ICAO Secretariat in our branch uh, has uh, email accounts that you can use to communicate this kind of information with us in terms of changing a course of focal point or uh, if a state wants to voluntarily participate in, um, in, in Corsia. Um, on, the, on the other question, you can use a service request to designate a new state user. Um, the answer is you could. You could use the, uh, the last option, which is other, to inform us uh, of a state user. Although uh, the preferable approach would be uh, to send us an email message to ccr at ico.int and uh, so we can keep track of all those requests outside uh, uh, the CCR. But you can also do it through the if you want. Yes. Thank you, Celius. Uh, is there any other question that we haven't addressed yet? I think all the other questions that they came through the chat function have been answered. Uh, but again, please, if we miss any question, please um, ask again, and we'll try to answer it. I noticed that two of you had problems with, um, um, you know, with uh, getting warnings and you could not complete uh, the um, editing information in a year record. As I mentioned in my response, please send us a screenshot of the warning that we're getting and we'll discuss with the developer and uh, find out what the root of the problem is. We haven't come across this issue before, so um, we need to look into that. Thank you, Sirius. Um, if there is no additional question, I mean, please feel free to ask more questions you may, or uh, um, uh, share the error messages you may have with CCR, uh, with the email address uh, that you, that, or the email address you have received uh, for, for the invitation to this uh, training session. We'll, uh, and also the CCR uh, email account that uh, Steely has mentioned, we'll, we'll be happy to uh, assist you. Um, okay, um, so I think I have one additional question. So how to um, how to do when state have designated two Corsair focal points? Um, in the system, in the CCR system, there's only one Corsair focal point um, available. So as far as I understand, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Celius, um, but um, the state has to nominate only one Corsia focal point. And the other Corsia focal point it could, you know, uh, should be the state user. Yes, this is uh, correct, uh, Ji uh, What you explained is exactly the process. So in a case where a state has designated two Corsia focal points, it's a decision of the state or between the two Corsia focal points to agree which one of the two will have the role of Corsia focal point in the CCR and the other person will be a state user. But that's an arrangement that has to be made between um, the Corsia focal points of a specific state. We are not going to decide that. You're going to have to inform us on that. So um, if there is no question, I think we were pretty much on time um, today. Uh, the, the CCR email address will be ccr at ikeo.int. But I can type it here as well, ccr at ikeo.int. Um, so without any question, I think uh, we were on time uh, today, thankfully. I um, I know we have taken too much time already today uh, from you. You know, it's already like 6 p.m. there. So thank you so much to participate in today's uh, pre-seminar. Um, again, this will not replace the actual physical uh, sem uh, seminar. Um, so, you know, uh, we will 
be expecting to see you physically um, in Nairobi and, and further sort of, you know, guide you on CTR and other Coursera related matters. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, have a good evening, um, everyone. Bye -bye. Um, just before we close, I would like to add one more thing. Um, this session has been recorded and we will try to make it available to all of you so you can watch it again if you want to at a future point in time. Uh, so we'll provide you all this information in a few days once we have processed uh, the, um, uh, the recording. Also, I think we have back on the line uh, uh, Mr. Tetsuya Tanaka, uh, the chief of um, our section. I don't know, Tetsuya, if you would like to say some some closing remarks. I, I'm fine, but if everybody hear me? Okay. Um, I just joined back from the other meeting, so you know so many things. But I, I really hope that, that this session give you everybody have a sense of how CCR what, not as a overwhelmingly. I hope that everybody have a feeling of reasonably simple, reasonable way of putting the data as a submission to IQ. I hope that everybody has that feeling. Secretary will continue to provide you, everybody, further assistance, and we will continue to communicate the focal points on, for example, when we authenticate the official CT CCR, we are expecting to have launch uh, next month, the beginning of May. If that happens, we will further communicate with the CCR, uh, CCR focal, COSIA focal points on how to do it. Then, I, as I mentioned by JUM and Stereos, we really hope to have a physical regional seminar as soon as this situation is recovered, to have more detail of how to understand CCR and overall CCR, COSIA features. I really appreciate your uh, participation and I hope, I hope it works. And I, I believe that the, the objective of this initial remote training session was achieved. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day and Easter holidays.